Well, good day, everybody, and it's it's good to have time together in whatever sense that is of our being together. And uh, this afternoon, we're going to begin our series. And and as I've said in the last few days, really do want to encourage you to, to be a part of this. As we explore the book of Acts together after the day of Pentecost, what are the, the things that you would like to explore? Let's hear from the, the voice of our community. So our theme is life in the spirit is a life. There we are fill in the blanks. So is a life that's open is where we're going today, an open life. But I wonder if uh, it's an adventurous life, if it's a surprising life, if it's a generous life, whatever that might be that you would like to explore through the book of Acts, let's suggest those and work on them in the weeks that are ahead. But yeah, life in the spirit is an open life. And as we read through that passage, thanks very much, Kevin, the it's open to the deep things of God. It's open to some significant matters of human connection. It is open to radical change in our values and our lifestyle. And I wonder, this is more a question than a statement. Is it open to the wonders and miracles that are mentioned there in that passage? Well, first of all, I, I would really like to uh, to welcome a, a good friend of ours, and that is Paul Wetzig. G'day, Paul. Hi, it's great to be here, Phil. Um, Paul, those of you who've met him, know him, um, those of you who've been involved in many of the things we've discussed around discipleship, Paul has been some of the, the inspiration and the motivation behind that, some of our Lent studies and our Advent things and so on. That's his thing, trying to help us lead lives that look more like disciples of Jesus in this 21st suburban century. So thanks again, Paul. Appreciate it. That's a pleasure. It's great to be here. Well, mate, this idea of living as disciples, people who follow yep. Jesus, that's all well and good when Jesus is walking around Galilee and we're reading the Gospels and, you know, the guys are trucking along with him, just jugling every day. But now Jesus has ascended and sent the Holy Spirit. So following Jesus closely is a different kettle of fish for us. Life in the Spirit. How do you think those ideas of being an open life spin out now in the way we look as Christ followers? Yeah, that's a great question, Phil. I think um, a life that is open and to the spirit is one for me that's um, willing to go into places and spaces that maybe are more challenging than what we've made Christianity into. Um, it's I guess the willingness to to step outside of the comfortable and step outside of the known and to maybe move into um, different spaces, creative spaces, and to be taken out of out of where we think God is found and locked into something bigger and um, more open, I guess. And, and, and that's a lot of that Pentecost story. You know, as we were there last weekend, we got 120 people together inside a little room. Yep. Um, and they're worried about stuff. And, and there's all that kind of shape around it. And then suddenly, kaboom, uh, yeah. we're out there in the big wide world, not sure what's going on, but prepared to give it a crack. Yeah. I, I wonder in that sense of perhaps what we've got or we've had God boxed into, one of the things that that jumps out of this passage for me is these folks were daily committed to the deeper things of God. They were not just yep. going, well, we know about God. They were really exploring in terms of prayer and scripture and teaching. They were digging right into it. And I wonder if they were, if they were actually saying, well, hang on, the stuff we've just assumed, let's, let's really dig in and ask some hard questions here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how does this apply to our lives? What does this mean to follow God in a new way? And I think for, for many of them, I mean, as we look at that upper room, they were clearly from all around the globe. Like there's different languages, different voices being heard, but there was a commonality that, that was obtained or found in this allegiance to Jesus' way. Um, and I think as they were doing that, maybe they were looking for well, what is it that, that God is asking us? Who is it that God is asking us to be as a new people? And I, as I've been reflecting, when you sent me the question, um, what does it mean to be open? Um, I was reflecting on the other references that I've seen and found 
in the scriptures to the Holy Spirit. And, and the first one that struck me was actually way back in Exodus, where the Holy Spirit is given to the artisans to craft the tabernacle. Like it's not the religious people, it's not anyone else. It's given to a couple of guys to, to do beautiful work, like to actually be skilled and to take this skill and say, God, this this is something we are creating for God. And, and as you had, you know, sent me that question, I was reflecting, maybe this is what the spirit is given to us or why the spirit is given to us, not so that we can stay stuck in this space, a religious space, but actually the creativity of who we are is fully enlivened into who God has made us to be and to create beautiful things. The, the second reference that then came to my mind, it, it was a, uh, a reading I did yesterday was the Magnificat where Mary goes to visit yeah. uh, Elizabeth. And at the start of that passage, um, Mary turns up, the baby inside Elizabeth leaps for joy and the spirit comes upon her to sing. Like it, it's not just a, a you know. It, oh, look at that. Yeah, look at that. I, but I, I have to sing. I have to do something beautiful, something creative. Yeah. And it just struck me that this life of the spirit is something that is beautiful, something that is creative, something that is joyful. Ah, oh, uh, and, and maybe we have to spend another week in, yeah, life in the spirit is a creative thing. But, you know, right back at the very beginning, it is this this breath of God, the spirit of God that moves across the waters yep. and creates the whole yep. wonderful world that God says, that's good. <laughs> yeah, like that. yeah. It, exactly. The very beginning of the whole story that we see yeah. is that story of beauty and creativity and goodness. And I, I wonder whether that is what Jesus is calling his people back to, or, or God is saying, here is my spirit for goodness, for creativity, for something to reflect a new heaven here and now. Like here, here is the beginning of the new heaven. Yeah, on and earth. we spoke about that on Ascension Sunday, so two weeks okay. ago, that, that the Ascension in, is part of this reconnection, Yep. that, that heaven and earth are, are, are rejoining and being redeemed and renewed, and that whole thing is there. So our lives are going to look like something new that's happening, and our life yeah. as a community Yes. It's also going to look new and different. And in that um, is change. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm convinced that people are not afraid of change, but they are afraid of loss. And what would it cost us to live in a, a fresh, new, unexplored way? Um, that sense of, of God creating new things amongst us. Well, mm. we might lose the known. Yeah, we might lose the the comfortable. We might, but we might also lose our lethargy. We might lose our oh well, this is the way we do things, yep. um, and and gain something that's new. And, and, and there's some hard stuff in that. I mean, I, I was thinking about even that business about prayer, scripture, yep. teaching. This isn't just I turn up and listen to whoever for twenty minutes on Sunday. This is a daily discipline that that yeah. takes us into and opens the door for a, a, a new creativity. So it, it's 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 spontaneous on the part of God, but it's also a deliberate seeking on our own part to to want to get a hold of that and and live in that. Yeah, it's a practice spontaneity, right? It, it's it, it well, it's like if you if you want to be good at anything, it's yeah. about putting in the time and the effort, like those craftsmen who the spirit came on in Exodus wasn't just that they were some randoms who, you know, the Holy spirit came on them and suddenly they could do embroidery better than anyone else. Like they genuinely were crafts people. They had yeah. worked at their trade, but their trade became enlivened by the spirit to create something even more beautiful. Uh, um, m- and music, fact- music as another, I, I think of Scott Russell when he plays the guitar, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I strum along. Scott strums along and then suddenly starts doing all this little stuff, you know, and I'm going, yeah. wow. but that's because he has had the discipline of practice and he does it and he does it. And then comes the opportunity for, for a new thing to, to, to break out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, another part of that thing of, of being open. Okay. So yeah. open to the spirit of God and the deeper yeah. thing, God moving in us. An open life is open to one another. 
Now, there's various versions of, of that scripture, and, and some simply say they held all their possessions in common. And it yep. certainly specifies that they sold things, they cared for one another in a very practical way. But they held all things in common. Um, I'm, I'm almost starting to read that as they held their stuff in common. And not just the lawnmower, but their stuff, the stuff of their hearts, yeah. the stuff of their life. And they they held that. That's a really beautiful thought that we might hold in common gently the things that are really important to us, that really are valuable. The lawnmower, yeah. sure. But the things that we're living in, are we open to one another to share those things? Yeah, that that's a great question. And I think that's a, a beautiful part of this. And that's what Jesus modeled for them to some extent. Like Jesus modeled to his disciples an openness. He, he was open in who he was and in how he, you know, wrestled with things. Like he, he was able to weep in the garden. Clearly somebody saw that to write the story down. He, you know, got angry, got frustrated, got tired, all of those things. He, he invited them into his very being. Um, and, and I think it's the same for us, that same invitation um, into a, an open life. Uh, and not just for us, but for the world around us, I think. Um, you know, Christians for far too long have been perceived as those who are more righteous, better than everyone else, have all the answers, have it all together. I can't be weak or broken. Well, at least that's my experience of growing up in yeah. Christian religious life for 40 plus years. Um, Only 40? Youngster. Uh, you know, there, there is something that is um, is powerful when you are willing to be open about your own life questions, challenges, and particularly in this generation. Like thinking of young people and my kids, I've got a sixteen, a fourteen, and an eight year old. They don't, they don't want to know easy answers. They want to wrestle with where does God fit in the hard things, in the reality of our lives and the struggle and the messiness because they observe that they see that, but they want to know where God, how God fits into all of that, not just yeah. as an answer, but as a, a wrestling relationship. And, and that's, you know, you mentioned that idea that not hiding the fact that we are broken, mm. not trying to be, um, you know, the, the perfect picture and so on, you know, a life that's shared with glad and humble hearts, glad and humble hearts. Yeah. Um, and, and in that, and, and around the table, that, that intimate circumstances of people feet under the table, sharing with one another. the message uh, translation puts it this way. Um, you know, yet yeah, that daily discipline worship yep. in the temple followed by meals at home, every meal, a celebration, joyful as they praise God. And here's the thing. As they lived in that that open humility and shared stuff, people in general liked what they saw. Yeah. Um, others' translations say they had the favour of most people. And I think that's because it's radically different. Yeah. You know, especially today. I'm, I'm looking out my window and there is a, that's got to be seven feet tall, that fence, between me and Brandon, who lives next door. Yeah. Uh, and that's standard up and down the street. Yep. To live an open life really strikes a lot of people as quite wonderful. Catherine, who lives four doors down, she walks her dog Pook every day. Yep. And and she stops and talks to people. Yeah. And and and, and we all give her, you know, um, bottles and cans and stuff. The RSPCA does their thing, and and she, but she is that that person in our neighbourhood that is connecting us, and it's. It's different. And people go, yeah. yeah, that's strange, but I like it. Yeah. Yeah. How how do I how do I get more of that? How do I engage more deeply with that? Someone and, and I think particularly for for this moment where people are willing to give their time, the most precious commodity we have, I think, is our time. Mm. Um, and our time for one another. Like we can we can give our money, we can give all kinds of other stuff. But actually, the thing that costs us most is our time to listen, truly listen to people and engage in in their life and their world. 
is a massive gift. And I think people recognize that people um, see something different when our, when we're willing to give our time to others. Yeah. The, the last thing I want to touch on, but it's the first thing that comes in the passage we've chosen. Uh, and everybody was amazed, stunned, gobsmacked by the miracles and wonders mm. that were being done amongst them. Um, is a life in the spirit actually open to kind of far out, weird, miraculous things? Are we really open for that? Or is that part of the box that we've created where we go, well, you know, the, there are some other churches that have that stuff? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, yeah. Look, I think we we are so contained in our um scientific rationalism here in australia um we are not really open for the the unexpected for the for the miraculous um and yet that is how god seems to operate that is how god seems to work in other parts of the world um and maybe maybe it's a focus thing maybe it's our capacity to look for the miraculous and to um, expect it more um, and to, I don't know, I think, I think there is something missing when our faith just becomes purely about um, what is possible and what is doable and lacks that sense of wonder and childlikeness, I guess, you know, um, of saying, well, well, God can do anything. If we believe in a God can who can do anything, wh- why don't we step out into that and see what maybe could happen? And and I would encourage us people to 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 look even in recent times and see that God has done amazing and marvelous things amongst us. You know, we have prayed for little children and their sight has been renewed. Um, We have asked for safety in the arrival of a baby in really complex and difficult circumstances. And Oliver, smiling and happy, you know, welcome to the world, mate. Uh, We have asked, you know, God, how can we um, be of any use to people? We're a small community. And yet we have, you know, been able to, by sharing our stuff, been able to bless the lives of I don't know how many dozens of families around us. And when we, we say, ah, oh, there's we don't have the resources for. All right, we don't, but God does. And so we bring what we have and we bring that in faith and then we'll watch and see what God can do. Paul, I really want to thank you for, uh, for helping us in that scripture today. I really appreciate it. Mate, every blessing. That's a pleasure. All right, it's great. Thanks for letting me be part of this. <laughs> see you again soon. That'd be great.